Okay, welcome to this video where we are going to have a look at working out the area of parallelograms, triangles and trapeziums or trapezia. So for this particular video we're going to be thinking about how the formulas for each of these shapes relate to the area of a rectangle. And when we look at the area of a rectangle, which we're not going to be looking at in this video, we look at working out the length times the width. So if we have the width, which is also the height, and we multiply it by the length, we get the area of a rectangle. So when it comes to a parallelogram, which is going to be our first shape that we're going to have a look at, we're going to think about how this relates to a rectangle. And if you think about this shape here that you can see on the screen, which is a parallelogram, we've got all these different lengths. Now if we were to chop off part of the end of the parallelogram, so if I was to chop off this part of the parallelogram, and I was to move it over to this side of the parallelogram, it would actually create a rectangle. I've obviously I've not been able to draw that perfectly, but you can hopefully see that if we got rid of that part of the triangle, we would actually have just a perfect rectangle. Now that diagonal line would no longer be useful to us and that's part of what we need to remember when we're looking at parallelograms and we're working out the area that that diagonal line there is not really useful to us. So when it comes to this all we actually care about is okay well what is the height of the rectangle which we can see inside the shape is 4 and what is the length of that rectangle which we can see down the bottom is 7. So when it comes to this obviously we're not going to draw that in every time because we want to just take it from the actual parallelogram itself. And to do that, all we need to do is take the base length and multiply it by the height. And in this case, again, we are looking at the perpendicular height, so you need to be very careful that you don't get confused and you don't use this diagonal length. So to work out the area here, we've got that the height is 4, it's inside the parallelogram. So to work out the area, all we need to do is 4 times 7. And we work that out, and that comes out as 28. And not forgetting with all areas, we need to give the units, and in this question we're looking at centimetres, so for an area unit we would say centimetres squared. And that would be the final answer for the area of a parallelogram. Okay, so that's all we're going to talk about with a parallelogram. You just do the base times the perpendicular height, and write your answer and don't forget your units. So let's have a look at a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions, so work out the area of both of these parallelograms, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then, we don't want this diagonal length of 5, so we would just do 3 times 8, and 3 times 8 is 24, so our answer is 24 centimetres squared. And there's our final answer for the first one. On to the next one, we don't need this length of 3, so we're just going to do the 2.4, which is the perpendicular height, and multiply that by 4. Now again, you just need to be careful when you're working that out. Obviously, if you have a calculator, you can just type that straight in. But otherwise, you're going to need to do some multiplication, so don't forget to drop out the decimal before you multiply it. So that would give you a final answer of 9.6, and 9.6 centimetre squared is our final answer for that parallelogram. Okay, so that is a parallelogram. Let's have a look at a triangle. Okay then, so looking at our triangle. Now again, let's think about how this relates to a rectangle. Because when we are looking at a triangle, and a right angled triangle is a very good one for this, if we were to turn this into a rectangle, which we could do by just drawing across and down, then that triangle there is actually half of the area of that rectangle. And that forms the basis of where our formula comes from. Because if the triangle is half of the rectangle, well let's just take our rectangle formula and divide it by 2. And our rectangle formula is the length times the width, or you could call that the base times the height. So all we would have to do is we take the base, which we call B, we multiply it by the height, and then we divide it by 2. And there are different ways of writing this, but you could just write 1 half of the base multiplied by the height, so you don't actually have to put the time sign, you just put half BH. So the area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. Now when we're doing that, you can do that in two different ways. You can multiply the base by a half, which halves the base and times it by the height. Or you can just do the base times the height and then divide your answer by 2. And that's what I'm going to do in this question. I'm going to take the base, which is 12, and I'm going to multiply it by the height, which is 5, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. And again in this question, for working out the area, we don't need to know this diagonal length which obviously with a right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. So if we don't need that length, we just need to focus on that perpendicular height, and that is a perpendicular height because as you can see, we've got a right angle in our triangle, meaning that that is gonna be a perpendicular line to the base. 
So all we need to do is 5 times 12, which gives us an answer of 60, and then we divide that answer by 2. So 60 divided by 2 gives us a final answer of 30, and again putting our units in centimetres squared. And there we go, we've got the area of our triangle. So obviously not all triangles are right angle triangles, so let's just have a look at one that's not a right angle triangle. Okay, so this question here is not a right angle triangle. It is a type of triangle, though it's an isosceles, and that is shown to you via these two lines here, drawn on those two lengths. Obviously, if we had another one on the bottom, it would be an equilateral, but you can already see it's not an equilateral as the side lengths are different. But this is an isosceles triangle, meaning both of those diagonal lengths there are both 17, matching this one just here. Now, again, with a triangle like this, we are just going to use the same formula, and that is that the area is equal to half base times height. There we go, which again you could write in a different way if you prefer. You can write down base times height or BH divided by 2. So for this one here then, we just need to identify the base and the height. The base is 16 and as you can see the height is 15. So for this particular one we're going to need to do 16 times 15 and again ignoring that diagonal length. So if we write that down, we've got to do 15 times 16. Now obviously that's probably not one that you're going to do in your head, but you could obviously just write your working out to the side. Now the answer for that comes out as 240, and we need to actually halve that. So 240, if we divide that by 2, gives us an area of 120. And again, we would write that with centimetres squared, so it's 120 centimetres squared. Now, particularly when you've got larger numbers like this, you could save some time by using the first formula, and that is to halve the base before you multiply it by the height. So instead of doing 15 times 16 and dividing by 2, we could have just halved the 16 and done 8 times 15 instead, and, in, and that as well would give us 120 straight away, and we wouldn't need to halve the answer. So up to you which method you use, either one is fine, but that is how you work out the area of a triangle. You do the base times the height and divide it by 2, or you just do half times the base and then times that by the height. So let's have a look at a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions on the screen for you to have a go at, so pause the video, work out the area of both these triangles, and we'll go over the answers in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then, we've got the base, which is 24, and we've got the height, which is 7. Again, we don't need this diagonal length, so we can just do 7 times 24 and then halve it. So 7 times 24, and again, you may need to just use a calculator, but obviously you could do the working out for that to the side. But while we're practicing, it's okay for us to use a calculator, and we get the answer 168. So if that is equal to 168, we need to divide that by 2, and our final answer is 84 centimetres squared. And there's our final answer for that first triangle. Okay, moving on to the next one. When we look at this next triangle, obviously we do not have the perpendicular height drawn on the triangle, but we have got it to the side. So we've got 12 centimetres as the height and 18 centimetres as the base. So for this one, we're going to need to do 12 times 18, as again, we do not need this diagonal length. So if we do 12 times 18 to start with, we get for that an answer, and again, you can work this out to the side, we get an answer of 216. Again, we just need to divide that by 2, and if we do 216 divided by 2, we get an answer of 108. Again, our units there are going to be centimetres squared, and that is the final answer for our two triangles. So for the first one, you should have got 84 centimetres squared, and for the second one, 108 centimetres squared. Right, OK, so that is looking at working out the area of a triangle, and now we're going to finish off by having a look at the area of a trapezium. OK, so looking at the area of a trapezium, and as with the other two, how does this relate to a rectangle? And you might have already spotted it's in a similar way to how our parallelogram did. And that is if we cut off this triangle at the end, and we were to rotate it and flip it around to the other side, and just slot it in just at the end there, we would end up having a rectangle. Obviously, that's deleting this triangle off the end. So this is also related to a rectangle, but we need to think about how it relates. Because by doing that, I have taken away part of this 12 centimetres, and I've added that 12, part of that 12 centimetres onto my 8 centimetres. So what we're actually doing is we are reducing the length of the base and increasing the length of the top in this particular example. 
So we need to figure out what the length of that rectangle would be. And the way to do that is we look at both of those lengths and we find their average. So to find the average of two numbers, you add them together and divide it by two. And that's what starts to form our formula. And when it comes to the formula of a trapezium, what we actually do is we take the top and the bottom, let's call that A and B, we add them together and divide it by two. So A plus B divided by two, and then we multiply that by the height, just like we do with a rectangle. So you multiply that by the height. Now again, there are two ways of writing this formula out. There is another way that we can use the, the, um, the fraction, the half. So we could say it's a half of A plus B, and then we don't have to put that time sign, we could just put, get rid of the time sign, and instead just put the letter H. So it's a half of A plus B multiplied by the height. So if we take that into account for this particular question, we're going to add together A plus B, and that is 8 plus 12. So 8 plus 12 is equal to 20. And take note of the fact here that we have to pick those two parallel lines as shown in the trapezium. If we were to add together the diagonal lines, well, they wouldn't be part of that rectangle that we made. So it has to be the two parallel lines, and that's what A and B are. So it's worth writing that down as part of your notes that these are the parallel lines. There we go, when we are working out the area of a trapezium. So we've added them together, we've got the answer 20. Now thinking back to our formula, we do need to make sure we divide that by two. And that's what doing this half here also does, depending on which film formula you prefer to look at. So 20 divided by two gives us an average length of the rectangle of 10. So that 10 there is what we found when we cut off this part of the triangle and added it onto this part here. What we've actually found out here is what we would have done is to subtracted two from this length and added two onto the length just there. That would make the length go from eight to 10 on the top and the length on the bottom go from 12 to 10. And that's what we have just found. So if we get rid of that, and then we need to just work it out. So we found that a plus b divided by two is 10 or the average length is 10. And then we just have to multiply it by the height. And you can see in this trapezium, the height is five. So to finish this off, we would do 10 times five. And that gives us a final answer of 50 centimeters squared. And there we go. That is how we work out the area of a trapezium and our answer is 50 centimeters squared. So very quickly running through that before you have a go, you do A plus B, which are the two parallel sides. You add them together, divide it by two to find the average length and then multiply it by the height. Exactly the same as we would do for a rectangle. So let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your question to work out the area of this trapezium. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so looking at this one then. Now A and B in this case is six and 10. Again, we do not need these diagonal lengths, so we could probably just get rid of those. So to start with here, we need to add together six and 10, and six plus 10 is equal to 16, and then we need to halve that length to find the average length, and that is 16 divided by two, which gives us an average of eight. So the average length is eight. Now we just need to multiply it by the height. The height is four, so we would just need to do eight times four, which is equal to 32, and our units again are centimeters squared. And there we go, we've worked out the area of a triangle, a parallelogram, and a trapezium. So I hope you found that video useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video. Thank you.